r slash ask reddit by reddicle serious 911 operators what's the one call that will be with you forever mobile so forgive the formatting also not a dispatcher but my mother was and I used to go sit with her in the center while she worked. The worst call I ever witnessed her take was a fatality on the interstate. She received a call said there was a major collision. She entered the call and police and fire were dispatched. She then took another call about the same accident however this call was from someone attempting to help the people involved in the crash. The person trying to help was the mother and father of the daughter in the car. The mom and dad were following the daughter and boyfriend home when the accident occurred dad was trying to help the daughter and boyfriend. And mother called 911. I can clearly remember my mom had this flip chart where she would ask questions and based on the answers she could flip to get medical help or basically instructions on what to tell the caller to help them in the situation. My mom asked if she was breathing if she was bleeding so on and so forth basically triggering the patients. I will never forget when my mom told the caller not to move the girl and the mother said her head is gone. My baby oh god my baby. It was the most shrill gasp sob scream I have ever heard. The pain and inhuman anguish that poured from that woman. I have never felt my blood run cold like that before. The mother kept asking my mom what do we do how do we help her. Literally my mother looked down at her flip cards. Looked at the call taker next to her and gulped for air. I did not hear any more from the call or what my mom said because I pushed my chair to the wall to get away from having to hear more. They called in another person to take over for my mom and we never talked about that call again. My mother was a mess for a few days after that. I also stopped going to the center after that. I thought for a long time I wanted to be a dispatcher and showed a lot of interest so that's why I got to sit in and watch. But not after that call. I want to give you and your mom both a big hug. I know it's a part of that job. And she's an angel for her service. But damn. AWW thank you. That time a guy tried to convince me he fell on the vegetable lodge in his a-hole. Favorite quote that night was, before you come in, grab the halligan. Or when I had a lady argue with me because she's lived next to the train yard for 54 years and is complaining about how much noise the trains are making. If you're going to call us and complain about trains, in a train yard, being trains there's nothing we can do ma'am. Less fun was when I had to instruct a 13 year old how to do CPR on his definitely dead father until an ambulance could arrive. Took 10 minutes for the cops to arrive. Kept asking me why it wasn't working. That one had me drinking when I got home. Christ, you had me laughing right up to that last one. Sustaining the illusion that everything is going to be okay just so the kid doesn't freak out must be incredibly difficult. He was a champ but yeah, no fun. I work with a nurse line. Finding people places to be seen after a nurse talks to them. I had a woman raped at a job by a co-worker. She had no idea if he was still around. She didn't want to go to the nearest medical facility because he might show up there. I had to do some quick digging. But I found her a hospital ED 20 miles away with same staff. What gets me is she was so flat and emotionless. She never got teary and had the presence of mind to call for advice but not any law enforcement. She was probably in survival mode. Just getting through what she needed to before dealing with the emotions thank you for helping her. I just experienced this for the first time last month. Not in a rape scenario. Thank god. It's amazing how you function on autopilot to do what needs to be done for the situation to move along. I didn't feel anything for about 2 days after that. I hope this woman was able to process everything she went through. Used to work at 000. I'll never forget a man calling up because his housemate was dead in the lounge room from an overdose and had been all day. He called around 9pm or something. It was worse because their other housemate was an intellectually disabled guy who had been home all day and just didn't realize what was happening. I told him to get her on the floor and started some CPR instructions. He did it for about 10 seconds before he said my name. There is no point. She is gone. I asked what medicines were nearby and he started naming them and just said, there are too many, I'll collect them up for the ambos. Anyway, we had gone through the formal process and I was getting ready to hang up. He asked me to stay and talk to him. So I did for about an hour while help was coming. He lived in the middle of nowhere. He said he was just sitting out on the back step and it just killed me listening to a grown ass dude being so wrecked. 
So when it was time to go I said goodbye and hit the end button before I burst into tears and ran away for 15 minutes. I hope he is doing okay. The time when my caller watched a 16 year old boy in the passenger seat of a BMW be burned alive. I can still hear her screams in my head. Edit. He was 20 years old. Not 16 year old. Also related article. Sunsentinel.com link. Bro. I am so sorry. Thanks for all that you do. If you ever need someone to talk with, let me know. I'm glad to listen. Thank you for the support. I learned a lot about the value of life while working at 9. 1. 1. I am thankful that I no longer work there. It was extremely stressful mentally. I copied pasted this from last time to save my fingers sewn work lol hope you enjoy it. It's one that will stick with me for a while. The worst one. I'll hold on to that one for a while longer. One that sticks out in my mind. It was my first week of being released on my own as a call taker. A 14-ish year old girl calls to tell me her friend and her are being followed by a guy near the railroad tracks and he kept pulling out his penis and touching her friend on the vagina area. She was walking slightly ahead of him and her friend with her hood up and her phone tucked in against her ear. She would stop talking to me to talk to the guy and turn back around and try to tell me where they were. All she could tell me is that they were near the railroad tracks. I rebid for her location. Felt like it took forever to catch a phase 2. Okay, now I know her general area. Wrote the run to the nearest house my pointer fell on so we had a start point. Putting in rear off to give the officers a good reference. I had already sent the run up and was giving updates as I talked to her. She was trying her darndest to make sure the male didn't know she was on the phone. To top it all off with it was dark outside. She couldn't figure out which way they were walking, east or west, so I told her to pick a direction and when she came up on a good landmark to tell me, that by this time, the helicopter is up and is bearing down on the area. I got a quick description of the guy and told her to keep it moving. Now I can hear the helicopter over the phone. Put it on the run. It gets sent out helicopter is circulating the area so we are all pretty close. Officers are driving down the side road of the railroad tracks and she finally tells me she can see the highway. We narrowed it down even closer. Helicopter finally spots them off in the wood line. And beelines the officers to them. Guy was arrested. He had a gun too. Kids are safe. And the whole ordeal took about 6-8 minutes tops. It was scary to me because I have a daughter that age. And as hard as I try. I still get emotionally invested in these calls. I have definitely had worse calls. But that is the one that tugs on my heartstrings. That's a rough one. Solid dispatching work though. That kind of detail for responding units can make a night and day difference in the outcome of the call. Too often I see people become complacent and just enter whatever address the phase 2 hits on. And say they'll figure it out when they get there. I had to stay on the phone with her. I wasn't about to leave her basically alone in some weird spot with some ducking weirdo following and messing with her and her friend. I figured if I kept rebidding and kept her on the phone I could do my little part from the room. That and if some Fiji real shitty would happen the audio would be recorded. Ducking weird I know. Maybe catch some background noise to get a better idea where they are. Especially when I heard the ghetto bird I knew the boys were close and I was a lot more comfortable when I saw on the run they had eyes on and could direct the boys in there better than I could. Took a call from a non-native English speaking Chinese woman. Her and her husband had just returned home from visiting family in China the night before. The husband who was a doctor said he had to get some work done before the next morning and was going to stay out late. The next morning the wife woke up and discovered that her husband never got in bed. She found him in the garage laying over the hood of their car. As I am talking to her and asking her to get him on the ground and perform CPR she said she couldn't. She was so distraught and didn't speak English well enough to articulate to me that her husband was actually in between their two cars and she had to back one of the cars up out of the garage to get him on the ground to perform CPR. Eventually she gave up trying to answer why she couldn't start CPR and started to scream you're killing my husband at the top of her lungs. I had to listen to her shout that at me over and over and over for the better part of 5 minutes before medics arrived and in 911 call time that is an eternity. The coroner stopped in later that day and confirmed that the husband had a heart attack and been dead for hours. A full rigor had set in and when they pulled him off of the hood of the car he began to spin like a top cause of the position of being hunched over the car. 
I know now that there was nothing I nor the wife could do to save her husband but for the longest time I've hated her for making me feel like I failed them. I've had sadder calls by far but that's the one that took the life out of me for continuing to do this job. I'm so sorry she said that to you in the heat of her grief. That sounds like a dreadful experience. There's absolutely nothing anybody could have done. It's not your fault Red Heart. There is never just one call, unless you have a bad call and quit, which happens. Most of us are dealing with years of exposure to the worst day of people's lives. I've worked a lot of really horrific traffic, homicides, suicides, children murdered or beat to death, drownings, rapes, fatal accidents, everything. You can't really compare one to another as a worst of the one. One reason all our calls stick with us is that 911 operators are not considered first responders. We are administrative. Therefore we do not have the same benefits resources to deal with trauma exposure PTSD or mental health in general. We can't take a call and listen to a baby being stabbed to death. The officers that respond to the scene are eligible for therapy services but we are not. Please consider writing to your elected officials to help us get recognized as first responders so we are eligible for the mental health care benefits other first responders receive. Thank you kind strangers for the gold and silvers. I really am floored by the response this comment is getting. I appreciate everyone's interest and willingness to write to their elected officials. 911 staff aka PST. Public safety telecommunicators need to be reclassified as protective service occupation to be eligible for similar benefits to what other first responders receive. If you want to learn more about what's been happening, APCO is the main agency for PSTs that has been working hard to push for reclassification and they have good information on their website if you search APCO SOC revision in Google. I'm super new to Reddit so I'm not quite sure how to share a link. Right now we are at a standstill with the OM because they are under the impression that PSTs do not provide life saving care guidance on 911 calls, which is highly inaccurate. Public pressure can and will help us get the classification we deserve. How are 911 operators not considered first responders when they are literally the first ones to respond? I wasn't aware that they didn't get the same benefits. Thank you for all you do. Many departments have separate benefits for civilians versus sworn field response employees. Reclassification will help us get the same benefits. I took a call for a vehicle in the ditch. All I could get out of the guy was the old church road out in the county. There are lots of old church roads. Had to wait for the cell phone to give me phase 2 and I was able to ping to a specific location. The guy said it was a bad accident. I had no idea how bad he meant. I sent first responders and ambulance and my deputies. Turns out a kid my age, about 24, was out drinking and tried driving home. Smashed into a guardrail over a bridge and the kid wasn't wearing a seatbelt so he was ejected over 60 feet from the wreckage of his vehicle and had been laying out in the snow for about an hour at that point. Last I heard, he was paralyzed and one of his legs was amputated. I can't believe he lived, to be honest. Hearing someone being stabbed, mentally ill people crying and screaming for help, we can't do anything most of the time. But someone went to an animal sanctuary and set their dogs on the deer. Bastards. My boyfriend is suffocating our baby, trying to say for duck's sake go get that pillow off that baby. Mindful this man could kill the caller. Police were there within 6 minutes. I am always particularly upset at missing children from children's homes. What chance in life? What happened to the baby? survived the attack and removed to foster care guy put in jail i don't know what happened after that i like to hope he was sent down and the mother got the baby back but i don't know unfortunately i've answered this question a few times there are many calls that will stick with me and that's a good thing it's important to care about people when your job is to care about people some of my memorable calls are funny some are sad some are just plain weird I'm in the mood to share a funny one. I took a medical call from a couple of guys who I'll call the Dodeski brothers. Just imagine that this descriptor is accurate, and you'll get an idea of these guys. One was diabetic, the other was taking him to hospital, but pulled over at a gas station after his friend started vomiting the diabetic guy was wandering around aimlessly during the call, so his buddy told him to move the car away from the gas pump. Me. Please keep your friend here. Don't let him drive. Bro. Come on. Bro. 
Our car is like right in the way of this gas pump. And it's getting kinda crowded. Me. AWW. That sucks. You can move the car yourself when I get off the phone with you. Bro. Um. Actually. My friend is. Like. Getting in right now. It's cool. Me. Dude. Do not let him drive. Have him come back here. I want you to keep an eye on him in case he gets any sicker or faints. Bro. That can happen. Dude. Hey man come back here. The 911 is saying you shouldn't drive. Bro. Dot. Okay. Now he's with me. Stay here. Dude. You can't drive. Diabetic dude. Huck. Or wh- Foo wuk. And then. The three dude least bro paramedics we had showed up on scene. Like. These guys would wear their uniforms with popped collars if they could. Anyway. Bro moved his car. Diabetic dude got transported. And there were fist bumps all around. I am not a bro. I am a middle aged woman and sound like one on the phone. LMAO. Your disclaimer at the end made it so much better. Thanks for doing what you do. I lost my daughter a few years ago so calls involving parents and children would get to me but this one would haunt anyone. A resident of a high rise called to tell us that someone had left a bag of dogs or cats in the stairwell but they were afraid to open the bag. I explained that animal control when no one was in danger was not a high priority call. The caller got her husband to come and open the bag. A woman had put her emaciated 13 year old in a garden garbage bag and left him in the stairwell of her apartment building. Jesus Christ. What the duck? Was he alive? Just. Barely. And now my PTSD kicks in. Getting a call from the father of a shooting victim who found out his daughter was dead via Facebook and further. Not being able to tell him his grandchild had been kidnapped by the ex-boyfriend but not being able to confirm anything thanks to poor quality policy and a lieutenant. Who was more concerned with calling the chief and talking than handling what turned into a father destroying a homicide scene. I've had over a dozen suicides on the phone in 6 years. And that father on the phone still haunts me. There are a number of calls that still stick with me. And every dispatcher has that same issue. Were they able to find the grandchild? Yes, he ended up safe and sound, and we pursued the male suspect for about an hour until he turned the gun on himself. Just a terrible day all around. Thanks for watching this radical video. Subscribe for the best Reddit videos straight to your feed.